Hello everyone, this is Rupal Purohit again and I am with you for our practical session. So, in this particular video, we are going to discuss about gravimetric estimation. Okay, this is a very general part, but then under gravimetric estimation, various types of exponents do come into picture. Alright, so it's a different one today. So, we begin with the aim of the experiment. The aim is estimation of Sulfate ion using barium ions as precipitate. Now I hope you understand this word precipitate. That means the very first thing which should come into your mind, and that is the reaction proceeds to precipitation. All right. So, I will first of all explain the principle behind this, the theory behind this experiment and also theoretically I will explain you what are the different steps which needs to be executed, okay, as usual in the first part of the video. And in the second part of the video, the actual demonstration of the experiment in the laboratory, alright. So here we go, the theoretical part behind this particular experiment is that we have over here a sulfate ion which is in a form of a solution. Okay, it is what? In the form of a solution. I will also tell you which sulfate I am going to take and that is sodium sulfate. That is Na2SO4. Okay, this is in the form of a solution. Now, upon addition of barium ions, I will tell you it is BaCl2. It results in the formation of a precipitate of barium sulfate, BaSO4. Okay, precipitate is a formation of a solid in presence of a liquid because BaSO4 is not going to be the only product, my dear friends. As you can check out over here, the chloride ions will combine with the sodium ions and it gives you what? Sodium chloride. Now, because my dear friends, the reaction is carried out in an aqueous medium, so you know it very well that sodium chloride is going to be what? Soluble in that. Okay, so it is in a form of a solution. And this barium sulfate is in a form of a solid. And that is what we call it as a precipitate. Now, solid in presence of a liquid is heavier. And because it is heavier, so it is going to settle down. And how are we going to show this? Yes, by means of a downward arrow. Alright. So, what are we going to do in this particular experiment is, we have initially sulfate ion in the form of a solution. Through the addition of the barium ions, okay, the sulfate ions are being converted into a precipitate. So, it is the barium ions which are responsible for the formation of a precipitate and hence we say that the role of barium ions is what? As a precipitate. You getting it? Alright. Now, what are we going to do is, this precipitate has to be filtered. Okay, because it is along with sodium chloride. So simple and that is by filter paper. Okay, this time we are going to use one pen paper number 42. In my previous videos also I told you, the selection of the Wattman paper depends upon the pore size of the filter paper and the particle size of the precipitate. Okay, the condition is very clear my dear friends and that is, the particle size of the precipitate should be larger than the pore size of the Wattman paper because we are interested my dear friends where in the precipitate. Alright, so in this particular experiment, we are going to use Wattman paper number 42. Alright, so we are going to filter this. Once the filtration process is done, upon filtration, we get two point, uh, possible parts, and that is one is the residue, which is going to be retained by the filter paper, and that is of course medium sulfate. So that will be in the form of a residue. Along with that, there is going to be NaCl. The reaction is not balanced, my dear friends. I am just telling you which are the reactants and which are the products. Later on, I give you the balanced reaction also, which is actually taking place in this experiment. So, this NaCl also, together, are going to be filtered. And this NaCl will be in the form of what? Filter. So, that is going to pass to the filter paper. Now, this residue is being dry. The residue is what? Dry. Or we can also say ignited. 
all right if it has got a higher thermal stability so ignition is also possible to what is to be done over here is drying means the most important perspective is to drive away the water molecules as quickly as possible without affecting the weight of dso all right so we are going to dry it and then we are going to weigh it all right and as we say gravimetric estimation is an estimation which is based on what weight so depending upon the weight of the residue we are in a position to estimate the sulfate ions which are going to be present in the given sodium sulfate solution all right so this is my dear friends the theory or what we call it as the principle behind this particular experiment i hope you have understood up to this very well now my dear friends once we have understood the principle behind this experiment we go into the procedure but theoretical part as i said in the next part of the video i am going to actually demonstrate in the laboratory so what are the different steps involved in our aim of estimating the sulfate ions so that is point number one is we are going to dilute the given solution of sodium sulfate as i already told you that initially we have a sulfate ions in the form of a solution okay then we have to convert it into a precipitate so the given solution has to be diluted obviously with uh, distilled water in a 100 cm cube standard measuring flask okay in a 100 cm cube or standard measuring flask that is step number 1 step number 2 is we need to prepare out 50 cm cube of the diluted solution into the beaker around 250 cm cube beaker we are going to prepare out 20 or 50 cm cube. that is if you have a 25 ml of paper please make sure you are preparing out twice all right so that is step number 2 now the given solution that i have sodium sulfate i need to convert it into a precipitate so what am i going to do now is yes very slowly very slowly that means i can also say drop wise i am going to add approximately 30 cm cube of 10% ba cl2 solution okay 10% is what the concentration that we are going to use so 10% of barium chloride solution approximately around say 30 cm cube so that you are going to add drop wise with constant stirring okay so as i told you the reaction which takes place is sodium sulfate barium chloride and that results in what a white precipitate of barium sulfate okay next process is baso4 is not the only product that we are getting okay it's along with nacl as well so what we are going to do is we are going to digest the precipitate on a boiling water bath for approximately 20 minutes approximately how much 20 minutes So the main purpose of this digestion is to effectively separate the precipitate from the solution. So once the entire process gets done of around 20 minutes, you will find that the barium sulfate particles settles down and the clear solution of NaCl will be at the top. All right. Now next thing is we are interested obviously in the precipitate. So you need to filter. The precipitate. I just write it down in short. PPT through. Now, very important, my dear friends. Previously weighed. Watchman paper. Okay, please be very careful. I just uh, underline this. It's previously weighed. Watchman paper number one. What was forty? Okay, that is depending upon the pore size and the particle size of the precipitate. Previously weighed is weighed because the entire analysis is based on what weight. Okay, so that is next step. Next, after the filtration part is being done, of course you need to do the washing. 
please do the washing of the PPT with the distilled water so as to get rid of any foreign impurities, any foreign ions. So we make sure that it is only containing the sulfate ions, which is of our interest. Of course, it is going to be with barium, but nothing else other than that. Okay, so that is what we are going to carry on the washing of the PPT years. So we have done the filtration part, we have done the washing. Now the last part is we are going to carry out the drying part. Okay, so drying of the PPT has to be done. You can make use of a cone. I actually demonstrate to you how exactly this has to be practically demonstrated. So drying of the PPT has to be done on a cone. Alright, so that what happens is we are going to dry up with the water molecules. Okay, and then this is going to be weighed. Okay, this is going to be what? Weighed. So that means we get two weights. First is over here. Let us say this is W1. This is going to be W2. So what is W2 gives us? Yes, it's the weight of the filter paper along with the precipitate. Okay, because here the precipitate is there. Okay, so the W2 is the weight of the filter paper along with the precipitate. W1 is only the weight of the filter paper. Alright, so therefore it's very simple. The weight of the PPT will be W2 minus of W1. Okay, so that is what is going to give you what? The weight of the PPT. And as I say, it's because it's calorimetric analysis. So it is a weight which matters. And then we'll be doing some calculations, which of course I'll be explaining you in the next part of the video. And then we are in a position to actually find out quantitatively how much amount of sulfate ions was originally provided to us in the given solution of sodium sulfate. So a brief recap of all the steps involved and that is, first is the given sodium sulfate solution has to be diluted with distilled water in a 100 ml standard measuring flask, prepare out 50 cm of that in a beaker, very slowly you are going to add into it 30 cm cube of drop wise with constant stirring barium chloride that results in the formation of a white PPT of barium sulfate. Next is we carry out the digestion process so as to effectively bring about the separation between barium sulfate and sodium chloride. Okay, it's around say 20 minutes. Once the digestion process is done, we proceed for filtration through previously weighed Watman paper 42. Okay, that is very important. Please, you need to take the weight of the uh, filter paper before. Okay, that's done. And then what you do is you give some washings so as to get rid of all the foreign ions. And once the washing is done, then what you do is you carry out the drying process. It is going to be through a cone, which I will practically demonstrate to you. It's very easy. And we can also check it out how the drying part is being done. Alright, and then once that is being dry, okay, and then you just cool it for some time and take the weight again, that is W2. So this W2 is going to give me the weight of the filter paper along with the precipitate. W1 is only the weight of the filter paper. You subtract both of them, okay, and find out the difference and that is going to give you the weight of the PPT.